project started in the spring of 2003 when I went out to Bonsville, North Carolina to take just a few fine art and still life pictures at the New Hope Valley Railway. I started taking pictures of trains, but I figured out real quick that the people were way more interesting than the equipment. I ended up making thousands of negatives documenting over three years of operations. This is the Bonsville Dispatcher, sir, over. Okay, Dispatcher, uh, the switch is lined for the mainline movement of the train when they get in. When they call for permission into the yard, everything's set for them. And we're going to do a standard switch and maneuver 17, right? Yes, sir. You do fine work. Take it at your quarter cent a mile. Tell them I said it was all right. Yeah, okay. I got you. This is a group that works very hard to keep railroad history alive and operational. And while this is a federally regulated passenger railroad, there's actually no paid staff. All of the equipment is maintained and operated by volunteers. I experimented quite a bit with different films and cameras over this project. This was taken with an old graphic view 4x5 camera. When I showed a print to some fine art photographer friends, they told me to crop it in tighter. When I showed it to a rail fan, he asked, where's the rest of the locomotive? The tracks are also maintained by volunteers. You know, they have machinery so they don't have to drive spikes with sledgehammers, but even with power tools, this is hard work. They were asked to move the self-propelled passenger car from where they had it stored in a Raleigh warehouse. It's called a rail diesel car, and they pulled it out so they could take it to the museum. It didn't make it to Bonsall, though. RDCs never ran in North Carolina, so they decided it didn't fit in their collection and it was put on loan to another museum. It turns out these days that floor space in a warehouse is more valuable than rail access, so they were allowed to pull the rails and ties up to be reused in Bonsall. I was asked to bring my camera and ride with this member as he drove a locomotive, probably for the last time. They fund the museum by offering rides to the public on the first Sunday of every month, from May to December. This is also their opportunity to go out and drive trains and to showcase the operation. The locomotive that's pulling the train on this trip is number 17, our steam locomotive built by Vulcan Ironworks in 1941.
This is the inside of their steam engine. One of the members personally bought the 65-ton General Electric locomotive. It was the second one he bought, the first being a smaller 25-ton unit. The railroad already had 80 and 45-ton GEs, so now I guess they only need one or two more sizes to have a full set. The New Hope Valley Railway's tracks are no longer tied to the outside world. So to move it, they had to take it apart and put it on flatbed trailers. During some downtime, I crawled up into the cab with my new 4x5 camera. The peeling paint seemed like something my F64 style friends would take a picture of, so I started setting up. Behind me, I heard the guy who bought the locomotive joking around about how much I spend on cameras. Apparently, collecting is something he and I have in common. Except I collect old cameras and he collects old locomotives. It was trucked to Bonsall, unloaded and reassembled, and now they use it as their primary engine. These volunteers come from all walks of life. A few of the members have day jobs working for major railroads like CSX and Amtrak. The rest are rail fans with professional titles, including clinical research scientist, software developer, electrician, electronic engineer, pilot, geologist, and a lot more. I was told many times that before the project was over, I would also be a rail fan, but I think I'll just say that I'm a fan of the New Hope Valley Railway. I would encourage everyone to go out and ride the New Hope Valley Railway.